crash at about 5.30, I listened to President Obama's live speech in South Africa um, at a memorial ceremony for Nelson Mandela. It's a great speech, and it frankly applies to our class today, uh, because it talked about um, many things. It talked about the life and times of Nelson Mandela, who if you're not aware of, was um, a, a leader in South Africa. South Africa had, under apartheid, legal segregation, much like what happened um, in the South after the Civil War ended. And uh, he was put in prison for 27 years because he was a, an activist trying to fight against the apartheid system. He was released in 1990. Um, the country goes through what I didn't think I would see in my lifetime, uh, a dramatic change um, in which the apartheid system was ended, and he became uh, the first um, president of the new country or the new democracy. And so President Obama in his speech today kind of talked about the greatness of Nelson Mandela, all of, his, all of his accomplishments, but also he drew a parallel between South Africa and the United States of LSU and Nelson Mandela and Abraham Lincoln as well as Gandhi. So, so I was like, oh my God, I wanted to call each of you at that moment and say, get up right now, <laughs> turn on CNN so we can talk about this speech during the class today. Um, and I'm sure you everybody. Is reconstruction what what it, what was the purpose of it why was why did it exist and then we're going to kind of see really the question we want to answer is how successful was it so Adam what was it it was like like in the second half of the 19th century the United States was like a discredited country that was like a process to assimilate blacks in the south that was okay part of it was um, to try to assimilate free blacks into life and culture in the south Okay, so you've got two situations. At the end of the Civil War, you have four million free persons, many of whom um, didn't know how to read and write, they didn't own property, um, and it was a process of trying to assimilate them into the country. But then you have all of the seceding states, um, all the Confederate states who had broken away, and, and so at the same time, you're trying to bring them back into the country. Problem of reconstruction, or why was this a challenge? One, two, and three. One, two, three. We didn't know whether to give the land back to the Confederates or to give power to the slaves who didn't know how to make it right. Okay. So what were, what were they going to do with the confiscated lands? That was there were actually many problems. They were going to give it all to the freedmen. Okay. And initially, um, what was General Sherman's idea? Forty acres and a mule. Every, what, every free uh, black should get 40 acres in a mule. Did that continue? Did that, yeah, they, uh, that was eventually done away with. Bob, what were you going to say? Um, it healed a lot because of Andrew Johnson, how he did everything he could to go against everything that Congress wanted to do. And I mean, he would not agree with anything, and I'm like, he would not compromise over it. And then also in the South, like Johnson refused to follow the union's laws. Interesting situation. You know, there's always like the what if when you study history. You know? So what if Lincoln had lived, you know? And um, was Lincoln's plan for Reconstruction different from Johnson's plan or from even the radical Reconstructions? Yes. You know, Lincoln was a much more compromising figure. And it, he, you know, it was like one ten percent of the people in your state, you know, take the pledge, the loyalty, then they can come back in. That was a, you know, it was a very, very, very moderate um, sense. And some, you're right. Some people were feeling like there had to be punishment, maybe, of the South. Kev, what were you gonna say? Uh, I was gonna say that there was just generally conflict and disagreements amongst all the people trying to facilitate reconstruction. Like you were just saying, Lincoln's plan was not well liked by Congress. They didn't want it to be that. They didn't want that to be the plan. Then Lincoln died, so we had Johnson come into office. And basically tries to subvert Congress every chance he gets, and then we have the Congress that is incredibly radical Republican pushing for reform to changes that aren't, that the country may not be ready for societally yet. And then you have the South, who doesn't really want to change at all, they just want to continue going on with it, what they were doing in the antebellum period. And at the same time, the South is slowly reconfiguring itself, and you're getting these uh, 
new Democrats in the South, or these changing Republicans in the South, and they have contrasting opinions to what the radicals and what's new and what Johnson wants to do. And there's just no consensus on what the best course of action is. And meanwhile, there are these three blacks who are basically stuck in limbo. I want to just read to you a couple of quotes um, that are from um, Southerners at the end of the Civil War because I want you to get a sense about their feelings, their attitudes, their thoughts. You know, as you think about kind of the enormity of the war and all that happened, um, what, was, what was the Southern perspective? Here's a couple quotes I think that kind of captures it. So, uh, uh, Amanda Worthington, who was a planter's wife from Mississippi, she saw her whole world destroyed. And in the fall of 1865, she assessed the damage by saying, none of us can realize that we are no longer wealthy. Yet, thanks to the Yankees, the cause of all unhappiness, such is the case. Um, one one uh, Virginia woman who, um, amongst her friends, expressed this kind of defiance. Every day, every hour that I live increases my hatred and detestation and loathing of that race. They, the Yankees, <coughs> disgrace our common humanity. As a people, I consider them vastly inferior to the better classes of our slaves. Um, and then lastly, um, this, they want to say, um, both men and women would teach their children to hate Yankees. Um, one mother said she trained her children to fear God, love the South, and live to avenge her. And, um, you know, if you know anybody who's from the South today, they still refer to Northerners as Yankees. And there still is this kind of like, um, for some, this sense of uh, deep-seated hatred and, and resentment. So, you know, we're trying to look at Reconstruction and see, okay, the challenges that were, were presented by Reconstruction, but I also want us to look bigger and think about what are the challenges that we still face today of Reconstruction. And honestly, I thought President Obama addressed it